Hello, welcome Disability Law Show. I am John Scholes. He is Savan Tumarkin, co-founding partner, Sanfiru Tumarkin LLP, number one, the most positively reviewed disability law firm in the country. And if you've been cut off, denied LTD by your insurance company or having a battle, you need someone in your corner, they will get you the compensation you deserve. It's not a lottery ticket. You are deserve the compensation. Make the phone call. They have helped literally tens of thousands of people across this country. 1-855-821-5900 to do so. Email help at disabilityrights.ca. Lots to get through on the show today, so stick around for the next 30 minutes, including, Savan, three vital things COVID-19 long haulers need to know when claiming LTD. Could not possibly be a hotter topic today, don't you think? Crazy. I, 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 yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, we're still in the middle of this global pandemic, uh, and there are a lot of issues to talk about. And, and John, not a day goes by where I don't get uh, calls and emails from people uh, from the three provinces where we have offices, uh, Ontario, BC, and Alberta. And we help people with their long-term disability claims. And, and now with COVID-19, I mean, it's, it's a very hot topic for a variety of reasons. Uh, there is a psychological impact. There are the long haulers who are experiencing physiological debilitating conditions, which doctors are only now starting to understand. Yeah. Uh, so it's something that we see quite a lot, and I think we're going to see more and more, unfortunately. We always warm up with something that's been happening uh, on your desk a little bit of a week that was. Paul, what do you got today? Yeah, one of the things I want to talk about uh, are IMEs, independent medical examinations. That's what it stands for. And of course, for anybody that has undergone one of these, they know that it's anything but independent, these medical examinations. And, and so let me tell you a little story. I, I had a call earlier this week by, by a lady uh, out of uh, uh, Calgary. And she's in her early 40s. She's a teacher. She has uh, uh, four young children. And she suffers from psychological um, issues, illnesses. Uh, there is severe anxiety. There is major depressive disorder. And she was also diagnosed with a dissociative disorder. Uh, not going to go into, into this. This is not a medical show. But these are severe conditions, and they're debilitating. And she has a psychologist that she's been going to, and a psychiatrist, frankly, recently, that has been prescribing medications. Well, she has been off work for a while and was on LTD, and uh, the insurance company decided in its wisdom to send her to one of those IMEs, independent medical examinations, with one of their own psychiatrists. So lo and behold, she goes to see the psychiatrist from the insurance company that the insurance company is paying for, mm -hmm. and uh, the psychiatrist that she sees uh, ends up cranking out a report that disagrees with everything that her doctors are saying. Okay. Disagrees with her psychologist that's been treating her now for a few years, disagrees with her psychiatrist, disagrees with her doctor. Surprise, surprise. And what does the insurance company do? They don't defer to the treating doctors who've known this lady for, for quite a while and have been treating her. They defer to this hired gun right? that, that they, they got this report from. And on the basis of that report, they cut her off. And I looked at that report. I, I, I read the report from the IME doctor. And this lady was telling me how many errors were in that report. So long story short, because I know we can take a whole show here just talking about this. I explained to her what her rights are. I told her I can get this case resolved fairly quickly. Um, she actually has not been cut off yet. She was told that she would be cut off in a matter of months. And I think the, uh, the objective is now, I told her, for me to get involved, to reach out to the insurance company, to write a very forceful letter and explain that if, in fact, they cut her off or if they intend on proceeding with a the cutoff, they're going to get a legal claim on their doorstep and they're going to end up paying a lot more down the road. And, and, you know, that's something that I tell people a lot is whether it's an IME that is the basis for why the insurance company is going to discontinue your payments, whether it's surveillance, whether it's any other reason. If the insurance company is telling you that they're going to stop your benefits, you have to believe that they will unless you get the necessary help to either prevent them from doing that or to set the stage to hit them hard, very, very hard, so that they come to the table begging to resolve the claim with you. Because otherwise, they're going to cut you off and the money will stop and you're going to have the bills coming in you know, at, at home and uh, n nothing will happen. So you have to be proactive. You have to reach out to us as soon as they tell you that they're going to cut you off. Yeah, you made a good point there. She hadn't been cut off yet, but it's, it's coming down the pipe. So people would naturally think, okay, well, I've been told I'm going to be cut off. I guess I should wait until I'm actually cut off to contact you. That's the wrong move, right? Well, they do one of three things. They either do exactly that or they try and appeal it because oh. they think I have time. Right? And the letter telling me I'm going to be cut off actually says there's an appeal process. So you think I'm going to get more support from my doctors, etc. 
not understanding that really realistically the insurance company has already put it into their computer program that your payments will cease as of whatever that end date is. The train will go off the, off tracks. I mean, this is it's going to hit a wall. You're not going to get paid. The third thing that people do, unfortunately, is they simply shut their eyes, they bury their head in the sand, and they think, they pray. And that's just not going to work. It's not going to work. The insurance company will stop those payments. You have to be proactive, and it's not hard. You don't even have to fight them yourself. You have to let us fight it for you. That's what we tell people. This is what we do for a living. At the very least, let us know what the issue is so we can tell you what your options are, and then you can decide. Incidentally, we're disability lawyers, but we're not the only ones. You can go to other people as well. You just have to make sure you go to the right people. Right. But the important thing for us, John, is to let people know what their rights are and what their options are, because oftentimes people think that they're helpless, and they're not. You did mention, though, this, this IME, this independent medical examination, is something set up and brought to you by the insurance company. So you're thinking, well, this is obviously not my doctor checking me out. They've been dealing with me for years. Do I have to go? Yes. Yes. You that, go. that you have to do. Every LTD policy I've ever looked at contains a provision that says that if the insurance company wants you to be seen by one of their assessors, a doctor, uh, any other assessor, there are different kinds of assessors, you have to do it. You don't have to get treatments from the people they send you to necessarily, right? But you have to go to these assessments. But there are ways to deal with these assessments. If you say, no, I don't want to go to this doctor that they're sending me to, the insurance company is going to say that you are in breach of the obligation under your policy, mm -hmm. under the provisions of the policy, and they're going to cut you off and they'll have a right to do so if, in fact, you are not going to that assessment. But there are ways, again, to deal with those assessments. There are ways to prepare for them. On our website, we have a lot of material and information that explains, here's what you do step by step to protect yourself, both before the assessment, during the assessment, and after the assessment. It's not hard. If you take those steps, if you protect yourself, you're going to be in a much more powerful position with your insurance company. And guess what? They're probably going to lay their hands off of you mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and they're going to move on to the next person that they think they can cut off. Now, you did mention the IME, you got to go, but you did slip in there. Treatment is different. I don't want to go too far, far down a rabbit hole because we got lots to cover today, but you don't necessarily have to say, if we want to send you to XYZ to get treatment, you have to go there. That's a different story. That's right? a different story, yes, yes. Okay. And if the insurance company is telling you, you got to go see that person or that, right. to go to that clinic, right. you got a question. Why are they pressing it? Why are they saying, we want you to go to that particular location? Yeah. Maybe they know what they're doing. Maybe they're that physio, that chiropractor, maybe they know they're good. But I'm suspicious. Why is the insurance company insisting that I go to that particular clinic? Well, maybe because I've seen many cases where people have done that and have gone to those clinics that the insurance company send them to only for that clinic to turn around a few weeks or a few months later and write a report that is favorable to the insurance company. Wow. So maybe they've been treating the person and helping them physiologically, psychologically, but when it comes to the legalities, they have an allegiance perhaps to the insurance company. I'm not saying in every case, but I'm saying I've seen those cases before which is why I'm saying that if the insurance company tells you go to that clinic or that doctor for treatments, you got to think to yourself, why? Why are they sending me there? Reaching out, real simple, 1-855-821-5900. There's another website I want to talk about. Again, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. You're thinking, wait a minute, there's a disability law show. Yes, but very, uh, very... Uh, deeply entrenched in employment law and disability law together. It's the other half of what your firm does. Uh, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca is that website. So, Van, tell me how useful it is for you. It is very useful. I mean, how many times do we hear about, John, when you, when you do the show with my partner, Lior, who yep. does the employment show, uh, individuals who are suffering from some kind of a disabling condition and they have issues with their insurance company at the same time they have issues with their employer right. or vice versa, right? They have issues with their employer, they've been let go. But guess what? They also have a disability type claim with the insurance company that's giving them problems. And so we created this pocket employment lawyer because it's predominantly dealing with employment issues, but it has a section that deals with long-term disability. And this is a free website. And what it does is it allows you to input a few key pieces of information and get answers to your questions, get accurate and fast answers to your specific case without contacting us without calling us and and we don't know you were there I mean you can close the yeah. browser after you finish just get the answers that's the key don't go to dr. Google <laughs> you're not gonna get very far you're gonna get very a lot of misinformation pocket employment lawyer will answer your questions when it comes to employment law issues and disability related issues check it out pocketemploymentlawyer.ca at your leisure you can do that or an email is also good help at disabilityrights.ca first one James writes in says I was cut off from long-term disability a few weeks ago I'm thinking about using the insurance company's appeals process to try to get my benefits back. If I ultimately lose my appeal, is it worth to apply again? 
So, John, James's question is indicative of probably thousands yep. that I have fielded over the years. And this is so natural. When you are denied long-term disability or when you're told that your benefits will be cut off, the, the letter that you get or the email that you get advising you of that from the insurance company contains a paragraph or two at the bottom inviting you to appeal. And it tells you if you have new information, if you have new documentation, send this to us. We will consider it. We will think again and you know, you know, carefully review everything and then tell you if perhaps we'll reverse our decision. It's all bogus. Am I going to tell you that these appeals never work? Of course I'm not going to say that. Just like, as I say often, you know, you can win the lottery once in a while too. But are you going to stake your future, <laughs> your family's income on this maybe, on this Seriously? lottery system? Look, these appeals are not formal procedures. You're not appealing to a judge. You're not appealing to a court. You're not appealing to a, the ombudsperson. You are appealing to the exact same people or group of people who denied you in the first place. As far as I'm concerned, that is a losing battle. I've seen this time and time again. People do it. They appeal once, get denied. They appeal twice, they get denied. They appeal three times, they get denied. And at some point, they walk away. They're tired. They're just upset. They're frustrated. And so what can James do here? Can he apply again? Of course, you can apply as many times as you want. They want you to do that because they know that at some point you'll be so frustrated that you'll walk away. There's a much more powerful way to, to go about this, and that's the legal process. Why? Because once we initiate the legal process with the insurance company, internally the claims process shifts. It goes from the department that was denying your claim to another department whose job it is to resolve your claim. And that's what you want. You want someone on the other side who's looking at how to resolve your claim, mm -hmm. not on how to put up wall after wall after wall. And that's what we do. Again, this is how we get these claims resolved, by applying pressure on the insurance company. By doing that for you, that's how we force them to pay you what you're owed. You know, you did mention, though, it could possibly be Appeal 1, Appeal 2, Appeal 3, so on and so forth. Now, there is the risk, apparently, there could be the risk of you running out of that two-year time limit, right? Yes. You might run out of time and you're done with your appeals and you've gotten nowhere. And most people are not aware of this. Right. Even though insurance company actually advise, when they, when they send you a denial letter, in many instances, in most instances, they'll actually tell you you have a two-year limitation period for starting a legal, legal action. Uh, but most people don't know, and they assume that the clock resets itself every time you get a denial. Not necessarily so. There's mixed case law on this. Here's what I tell people. If you were denied, the date of first denial, the first time you were denied long-term disability, that's when the two-year clock runs. So if you appeal 500 times after that, and you contact me five years later, I'm going to tell you you're out of time. The insurance company can now keep all the money that they owe you. Wow. And that's happened more than on more than one occasion, John. It's happened many times. I remember this one individual who was, when they first applied and were denied, they were in their early 30s. And they contacted me after watching the show, and they were in their 40s now, still disabled. But back then, they went to the, law, to the wrong law firm who advised them incorrectly that there's nothing they can do. And that person... I remember calculating that in my mind when I, when he, you know, I was speaking with him. Uh, that person uh, uh, lost upwards of five to $600,000 that was owed to him and his family. So just imagine if you multiply that across the board, how much these insurance companies yeah. are pocketing. Don't let them do that. Don't let them do that. Got to take a short break. We'll do that now when we uh, come back. The vital things that COVID-19 long haulers need to know about claiming LTD. You'll want to stick around for this. We'll get to it. Phone number 1-855-821-5900. That is how you reach out and help at disabilityrights.ca. It's a disability law show. Stick around. Coming back. People think you have to sign back a severance offer by a deadline. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Deadlines are used as a pressure tactic. Make sure the offer is fair before you sign. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. Can insurance companies deny long-term disability claims for mental illness? When you're suffering from a mental health disability, insurance companies just don't understand. But we do. They can absolutely not force you back to work. If your doctors say you are not ready and you know you're not ready, they cannot make you go back to work. If you have a mental health disability and your claim is denied, don't give up. Give us a call and let us fight for you. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back and get what you're owed. People think you aren't owed severance pay if you are fired for a reason. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Most for-cause terminations are false and you are still owed full severance. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca.
All right, welcome back. Disability Law Show. John Scholes here. Savan Tamarkin, co-founding partner, Sam Firu, Tamarkin LLP. Feel free to reach out any time to the disability law firm that has been positively uh, reviewed. Uh, Google, as a matter of fact, so many times, in fact, more than any other disability law firm in the country. If you can believe it, you can search it and you can check it out for yourself. But if you just want to make a phone call and reach out, really simple, 1-855-821-5900. I'm going to give you another website that has... Uh, kind of something to do with what we're going to talk about now and that is covidrights.ca quick questionnaire some valuable information there as well covidrights.ca it'll take you right to the website you need to know so we're going to talk about this savannah three vital things covid19 long haulers need to know when claiming ltd we're deep enough into this pandemic that we have a lot of these people coming out of the woodwork and they are long haulers they're still suffering symptoms they're making claims on ltd and there's a lot of misinformation a lot of uh, bad things happening for these people, so we want to clear up some things now. Number one is you should receive LTD benefits if you can't work due to the physical or psychological effects of COVID-19, right? That's exactly, exactly correct. Yeah. And, you know, because of the pandemic, because of uh, what's happened, people being out of work, uh, there's been a lot of, of, I mean, we've had a lot of government programs, right? There's a lot of money that's been thrown out there, and so people are a little confused about what their rights are. Mm -hmm. Insurance companies, I've heard people calling me and telling me their insurance companies have told them, yeah, no, we're, we're not going to pay you for being disabled due to COVID-19, a long hauler, or even because you have depression or severe anxiety because of it. Because you know what? You can go and you can apply for whatever government program is, is paying out right now. So they're shifting the blame. They're shifting their obligations to the government, which is us, the taxpayer. Now, I have no problem with the government helping out individuals. I have a problem with insurance company skirting their obligations. So, so let's just set the record straight here. If you are disabled for any reason, you have a psychological disability okay, or illness, disease, whatever that is, or, or a physiological one. It's a chronic back pain. It's fibromyalgia. It's MS, Parkinson's, whatever it is. If you are disabled from working and your doctors confirm you're disabled, and you have access to short-term and or long-term disability, you should apply. You should apply because you have that coverage. Those insurance companies have been paid significant premiums over the years to cover individuals like yourself in the event that you cannot work because of a disability. It could be psychological, physical, or both. And so now when you have the, the long haulers, right, this is something new, relatively speaking. Doctors are trying to figure out what's what. Look, if your disability is legitimate. If you cannot work and your doctors say you cannot work, then that's it. That's where the analysis ends. The insurance company must respect that and they must pay you. And if they don't, that's where we step in and force them to pay you. You know, it's interesting, before we move on to the second point, in there is physical and psychological. Have you noticed a bigger uptick in psychological claims? Because we've talked about this mm. countless times in the show that quite often psychological problems don't show up in an X-ray or a, an MRI or a, an ultrasound. They just there's no proof, physical proof, right? There is no. But it's legit. It's completely legit. And, and there's still a stigma associated yep. with mental health. And uh, no, John, absolutely. Not only that, let, let me, you know, put a little twist on this, which is, you know, with, with the vaccine mandates that you have in many workplaces and governments requesting it, and, mm -hmm. you know, we have a, there's, it's a very politically charged issue, okay? So forget about, from my standpoint, whether it's correct or not. I'm vaccinated. My family's vaccinated. Yep. That's not the issue. But, you know, many people are dealing with a psychological stress, of vaccinations. They're dealing with the psychological stress of being out of work. They're dealing with the psychological stress of uh, not being able to work in certain environments. If you are disabled because of those conditions, if your doctor or doctors are saying you're disabled, you need time off, you need treatments, and you have coverage for short-term or long-term disability, you should apply. And the insurance company can't simply say, we simply don't buy it, that you're anxious or that you're you know, depressed. They can't say that if your doctors have confirmed it. They can say it, but then you have a legal right you can enforce against the insurance company. And you can force them. You can force them to pay you. I'm telling you this from experience. They understand that there is a tsunami of these claims coming because of the psychological toll that COVID-19 in yeah. general has taken on people. But you know what? For years, they were hauling in just mountains of money, it's about time that they actually pay out on these claims for which they were already paid for. Number two of our point is this, if you're a COVID-19 long hauler, your insurer can't discriminate against you and deny your claim basis of a COVID-19 diagnosis. Right? Yeah, and that's something that, again, we're seeing over and over with insurance companies who are either trying to shift 
payments, shift the blame to government and other types of, uh, um, uh, w you know, financial help uh, versus saying we don't cover COVID-19. Look, this is not a travel insurance policy, right? <laughs> Remember when COVID first hit, when it came to Canada in March or maybe it was a bit earlier than that, uh, and, and people were told back then that if you go on vacation, you will not be covered if something happens due to COVID-19, there's an exclusion. Right. These exclusions are nowhere near, uh, sorry, they're not in policies, in long-term disability policies. They may be in travel insurance policies nowadays, but they're not in long-term uh, 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 right. in insurance policies. And so therefore, if you are suffering from any illness related to COVID-19, physically, psychologically, or a mixture of both, and you apply for long-term disability and you get denied, then you have a right that you can enforce. We can't force the insurance company to pay you. Point number three is this. If you are denied LTD because of COVID-19 exclusion, contact us immediately and do not, that A word, do not appeal. No, do not appeal. Do not appeal. I've seen quite a few of these kinds of denials. And I'm telling you, John, people are walking away. They simply assume that the insurance company is correct, like they do in many instances. They're not. The insurance company cannot simply make up the rules as they go along. Look, the relationship between you and the insurance company, long-term disability insurer, is a contractual one. It means there is a contract. This contract contains provisions and obligations. Mm -hmm. You have certain obligations vis-a-vis -vis the insurance company. They have certain obligations towards you. If you provide the proof, if you provide to them the medical documentation proving that you are disabled, they have a corresponding obligation to honor that and then to pay you so long as you are disabled. And if they breach their obligations, you now have a right you can enforce. And it's not hard, it really isn't. This is the one thing I wanna get mm. you know, to people that enforcing these rights is not difficult. You just have to you know, break through this mirage that these insurance companies are, are omnipotent. They're not. They are there to make money and they make money so long as you don't challenge them. That's how they make money. They make money by telling you and, and feeding you this information and, and, and this nonsense that you are not legitimately disabled or that even if you're disabled, somehow it falls under an exclusion in the policy when there is no such, ex uh, you know, such ex uh, exclusion. So basically, you're keeping up your end of the bargain. You're on the up and up with your policy. You're yeah. paying your premiums. You've got medical documentation backing you. There should not be a problem here. You or your employer, there should not be a problem. Yeah. But there is. There is because insurance companies understand that people are in a tough spot. And they understand also something very, very basic, that most people will walk away. Yeah, they're too stressed out to deal with it. They are. They don't want to. We'll take a short break. What you can do if you're uh, denied LTD benefits because your condition is not considered serious. How about that one? We'll tackle that after the break. 1-855-821-5900. Help at disabilityrights.ca. Come right back. People think you should go to the government to get severance pay. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Government can only help you get minimum severance, but not everything you're entitled to. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. If your long-term disability claim is denied, should you appeal? Appeals often fail because insurance companies control the process. So long as you appeal, you're playing by their rules. You should never appeal the denial of your disability benefits. Appeals are just a mirage of false hope. Don't. That's their process. Take it out of their hands and fight for your rights with our help. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think their employer can make changes to their job. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Your employer can't change your pay, hours, or duties. You may be entitled to full severance pay. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. All right, welcome back. Disability Law Show. John Scholes, Savan Tamarkin here as well, co-founding partners at Firu Tamarkin LLP. Reach out anytime you would like. Have a simple chat, relax, get some more information. 1-855-821-5900. There's an email address, help at disabilityrights.ca. And I'm going to throw one more website at you. You can write it down. You probably don't have to. You'll remember mydisabilityquestions.com. Free website, anonymous, questions and answers about disability. Just type in your question. It will be answered. You can also search it. There's a searchable database on this website. If your question or something very similar has been asked in the past, chances are there's a robust answer waiting for you. Go no further. But if you want to, mydisabilityquestions.com. From it, Savan, Melvin writes in, says, How important is the experience and reputation of the lawyer who is representing someone to get compensation after disability claim denial? It's hugely important and, and you know I often compare this to uh, 
medicine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have a cardiac issue, you have issues with your heart, uh, when you're doing your research on who should be operating on it, are you going to be looking at the qualifications and experience of the person, uh, the doctor, the hospital? Uh, it's the same way here. It's the same thing exactly. You want the best of the best, and you want not only the best of the best, you want the people who are considered to be mm -hmm. the best. And what I mean by that is that it's a very small bar. In all three jurisdictions where we practice, Ontario, BC, and Alberta, uh, we are known in the bar. We know the lawyers on both sides. We know the defense lawyers who work for the insurance companies. We know the adjusters. By the way, these insurance companies, they're national, if not international, companies. So they are, you know, we're dealing with the exact same people all the time, yeah. and they understand our expertise. They also understand that if we are representing someone, we are representing that person because we believe in the case. Okay, we don't operate the way some outfits do, unfortunately, where it's like a factory, right? They may not believe in you, they may not think that you have a case, but they figure, you know what, let's just pump it through the system and see if we can make a buck or two. We don't operate that way. If we tell you you have a case, it's because we believe that you have a case. And remember something, you know, when we are taking on a case and represent someone, uh, it's not just us standing behind your case. It's the results that we've been able to get for our clients over the years that stand behind your case. Because it means that now, whoever is on the other side, they know that they're dealing with serious people, people who have expertise and people who will go all the way if need be. Let me just relay something else before we move on, John. This is important because to Melvin's question, I used to work on the defense side. Many, many years ago, I used to work for insurance companies. And when I received an assignment from my adjuster client, and I looked at the claim and I flipped to the back page and I looked at who the lawyer was and who the, the, the law firm is, that impacted my assessment to the adjuster, meaning that I would pick up the phone to the adjuster and either say, we can pay very little on this case, wow. or we're gonna have to pay a lot of money on this case. And all that's changed, meaning that the, 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 the only thing that really sort of factored in, in that really quick analysis at the outset, was who the lawyer was on the other side, who's representing this disabled or injured individual? Who's the law firm? Do they have the resources and expertise? Why? Because insurance companies understand that if they have somebody who's very strong, somebody who has the resources and expertise, they're not going to let this go. Where if you don't have someone serious, you can pay them peanuts, their clients are going to get peanuts, and you can make the claim go away. So it's absolutely crucial. If you go to a bad lawyer, or if you go to a good lawyer, if you go to a law firm that has a certain reputation, right, where people respect you, it will make a huge difference. And if you don't, if you don't do that, you don't do your due diligence, you do so at your own peril. It's just, it's amazing. That's a, it's a, it's a really cool bit of kind of inside information. Yeah. You wouldn't think that the insurance company looks at it and says, okay, we just, we'll throw a few shekels at this guy. They're not serious. They're not going to, they're not going to go 12 rounds. But. I've done that myself, John. I've done that myself. And, and I can tell you that uh, we've had situations where our lawyers, uh, they've written to the insurance company at the beginning of the claim, just simply notifying the insurance company that we're on the file and the insurance company automatically reversed position. I, I'm telling you, that wasn't a fluke. That wasn't a fluke, right? It was because the insurance companies understood who they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen in every case. I understand mm -hmm. that. And we've worked very hard to get to this point. But the point is that we've worked hard for our reputation, and our reputation is now working for the people that we represent. Yeah. Last couple of minutes of the show, again, we talked a lot about COVID-19 and long haulers. Any last thoughts about what they should be doing? Because there's going to be more and more and more as the months come on. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a lot more of the psychological yep. element that is uh, coming through. And I want to tell people, you know, you're not alone. You need to get the help. You need to go to your doctors. You need to. I know there's waiting lists now for psychiatrists. It's almost impossible to get. There are many wonderful psychologists, psychotherapists. Get the help you need. I'm not a doctor, I can't help with that, but what I can help is when the insurance company is not doing what it's supposed to do and not paying you what you are owed under the policy. And John, one last point for our viewers, it may not be you, it may be a, a family member, a relative, it could be a colleague or a friend. If you know somebody in need of help with their long-term disability claim, please, please tell them to contact us. It'll cost nothing for them to get the information they need. A lot of information for you there, and I'll give it to you uh, some more contact as we close out the show for today. COVIDrights.ca. Again, a quick questionnaire on that website. It can be really helpful for you. COVIDrights.ca. Email address we use is help at disabilityrights.ca. Feel free to write an email anytime to Savan and his colleagues. They'll take care of it. MyDisabilityQuestions.com is another website, free and anonymous. Again, use that anytime you would like. And, of course, if you go to uh, disabilityrights.ca, the website for the firm, that'll give you contact as well to find and search out radio shows across the country you can listen to as well. A lot of information, but have a look, and we'll take it off next time. And uh, join us again, Disability Law Show. Thanks for hanging around.